Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to take a deep and sincere look to what is the current conception of what is high resolution audio, high resolution music, the naked truth. Are you ready? Let's get to it. Okay, guys, we're going to go through eight main points where I want to try to understand, to focus on the main issues, the main aspects of what is high resolution audio. And I mean, what is the conceptions? What are the issues, the problems that are making a lot of confusion in this world, in this environment for audiophiles for hi-fi geeks and just normal consumers because obviously the more confusion we have the more people are gonna go take a distance put a distance ignore what is something that could be potentially could be good is it that good right after this okay so first point does it make sense any sense to talk about high resolution audio. Well, in a while, we're gonna take a look also actually at the definition. But let's just say that high resolution audio, as we all know, considers, takes into consideration a high bit depth, depth and a high frequency response. And these do make sense not only because we have an increase of the quality of the normal frequencies a lot of people are already think of the higher frequencies we're not going to hear those wait a moment we also want high quality normal standard frequencies 20 hertz 20 kilohertz plus with high resolution audio equipment you can also acquire actually the lower register but also the higher register the extremes of what is a true audio signal. I did a video where I demonstrated, or at least I reported some proof regarding what is capable of, what the human ear and the human body is capable of hearing, what it picks up from a sound, ultrasound beyond 20 kilohertz. If it makes sense or not, it does. Take a look at that video, here's a link, and you will understand why those higher frequencies usually above 20 22 kilohertz what is unfortunately the cut down of a normal cd does make sense to be inside a file inside a recording why it can really make a difference and achieve a higher fidelity overall okay so these two points i think are paramount in saying yes it does make sense to talk about high resolution but there are issues but there are some standards, some aspects that need to be satisfied in order to achieve that. Let's proceed. Okay, our second point is misinformation. Uh, a lot, especially in the first moments of high resolution, 2000, I would say 2013, 14, 15, we started to talk about this topic we started to see the logos appear here and there, mainly on Sony products, but not only. There was a lot of misinformation. And in fact, if you go and check uh, the Wikipedia page, Wikipedia page of high resolution audio, it says unreasonably, understandably, that it is a commercial uh, type of information, type of logo. It is not something that it is associated to a precise, uh, specification which instead now it is it also says technical but technical doesn't mean anything I mean there are some specs that need to be satisfied which now we do have we'll get back we'll get to this in a while so I just wanted to put in some attention on the fact that we did have a lot of misinformation and a lot of self attribution I mean a lot of people claimed their records or their um, gear was high res in certain moments while it was not like that or just barely like that 
okay? I don't want to obviously make any names, but we did have that moment of crisis. Fortunately, I think we're going out from that and we do have some precise um, points in our landscape to which we can anchor our knowledge and go ahead and know, separate what is good and what is bad. Coming to it. Okay, now let's come to the core of this video, the main point, point number three, the definition. Because a lot of people don't know this, and I think it's very important, a paramount importance, make this clear. Yes, there is a definition. There is exact standards that must be satisfied, that need to be met in order to achieve, in order to proclaim yourself high res. Whether if you're gear, whether if you're a recording, etc. Now we'll take a look. Okay, so we're talking we're talking about a definition of obviously analog and digital high resolution. Why analog? Now you understand why. We're talking about a definition established by the Japanese Audio Society. Okay, so they established starting in 2004 and now updated in 2019, end of 2019, September 3rd what exactly is high resolution so i want to read this together with you and i'll put the um the text on uh, on the video so you can follow me in principle the definition of high res audio is based on the announcement of japan electronics and information technology industry association j e i t a on the march 26 2014. high res audio logo applicable products JAS defines is to fulfill the following specification on the recording, reproduction, and signal transition process. These three aspect guys, recording, something I already said a dozen zillion times, which was very important and I'm happy to see now that this is canonized, reproduction, our gear and signal transition I mean while you're working with high-resolution audio so as you can see the first point is analog process yes because obviously the output is an analog signal so even that has to satisfy specific requirements high-resolution requirements as you can see finally we're talking about microphones yes because obviously if you don't record with high-res uh, gear mics etc you're not gonna have a high resolution a true native high resolution audio format audio signal music okay so number one microphone response performance at least 40,000 Hertz 20 ki 40 kilohertz or above during recording also number two the amplification performance must be at least 40 kilohertz or above again point three speaker and headphone performance must be 40 kilohertz or above so now we finally have some parameters that we must face and use this is the reference okay so instead let's go ahead now let's take a look at the digital process number one recording format capability of recording using 96 kilohertz per 24 bits format or above. So, unfortunately there was a lot again of misinformation. I'll get I'll go back to this, but uh, especially in 2015 in America, we decided that high resolution music, they also made a logo which disappeared, was just anything above CD quality, 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bits. Everything above that was high res. No that's not true now it isn't for sure here we're saying it it has to be at least 96 kilohertz per 24 bits otherwise it's not high resolution and we're having some problems there because a lot of people are claiming that their their products are high res with lower frequency samples with lower bit depth so number two interface input output interface with a performance again of that Decoding five playability, 96.24 above, uh, flak or wave. I mean, again, we're ju they're just repeating that every type of reproduction, of acquirement, of playback must satisfy these parameters. Self-recording equipment, 
digital signal processes, DSP processing, digital to analog conversion, all have to meet these specific requirements. So what is the problem here? Yes, which brings us to our fourth point that we do have these parameters, but are we sure that these are met from the different companies and labels? Where are we finding our high resolution software now? Online, that's the only place because obviously we do not have, unfortunately, a physical media where to put high res, unless we're talking about a USB key or something like that, a solid state drive, but that's not a true mass product of with high res. That's something just carrying high res. In fact, it's just liquid music. So we're getting all our stuff, all our music from online uh, services. It can be streaming, it can be sold as an album, but they're all files, Com less compressed or more compressed. Usually, um, in most cases, these actually, if they are high res, they must be lossless. So what's happening? The main streaming services, high resolution streaming services, so we're not talking about Spotify, et similia, and something similar like that. We're talking about Kobus, we're talking about Tidal, we're talking about high res audio. And these services are certified. That's what at least they claim in their websites, and I'm sure it's true, because they are following, they submitted an application and they were approved by the Japanese Audio Society. So their stuff is certified. Although I have a problem here because I see that, the, for example, in Kobos, you have the logo for anything that goes above high res quality. So maybe I'm thinking, I don't know, that that rule is still accepted. I, I actually don't know what is happening because we have these parameters but as again, I see that instead there is, for for example, 48 kilohertz or only 24 bits um, music that gets its nice little yellow logo high resolution. But that's not true according to the Japan Audio Society. Maybe things are slowly changing. I do not have the answer. If you have the answer, please chime in and write your comment and why we have this mixture of different uh, types of resolution. I just want to make a side note. Unfortunately, resolution is a very bad term they chose because resolution technically means the bit depth, how many bits define each sample. So we have this, uh, unfortunately, this sad <laughs> mixture, this um, combining of different meanings in this specific term. In any case, when we say high res, we mean what we just said. For gear, everything above 40 kilohertz, they, they focus mainly on the frequency response. And instead for audio files, we're talking about everything that is above or matches 96 kilohertz sampling rate, 24 bits. Oh, I just wanted to add, why is import a certification? Because as you can imagine, we can, a lot of people could just take, that is what was happening for a specific amount of time a few years ago. Just, you take the single CD quality or even lower maybe um, file and you just upsample that. You just upsample it. It's very easy. You can do it with any, even free software. At that point, you have a file which is magically high res, but it's, it's sonically crap res. Absolutely. In any case. Let's go ahead. Point number five, gear certification. That's another big issue because as you can imagine, as you can see, when we see a review, when we see the specs of a manufacturer online, they can write whatever they want. I mean, yes, they are submitting, I hope, a documentation proving that their uh, gear does have specific, does meet specific characteristics that they're asking, which we have seen before. But that's not probably happening. I mean, it didn't happen for the for Volkswagen, Volkswagen for all those uh, all the European uh, automobiles that were claiming that they were had had very low 
polluting factors, while instead the true measurements were very high. Remember that? That was very big in Germany and here in Europe, that big issue. It's the same here. I mean, nobody's going to check that much in detail. I don't think anyone is going to go to jail for this. So a lot of specs are pumped, are really enhanced, inflated, unfortunately. They're not true. That's why good reviews also have measurements together with the with the with just the, the 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 text and that's good that's a good idea because you really put on the benchmark everything and you try to see if the product really meets those specifications so that's also a big issue i think yes high resolution audio gear it meets it's above 40 kilohertz okay i want to have the certainty, I want to be 100% sure that what I'm buying is high res. It does reach that frequency response. And that's an issue. I mean, I'm sure that good and serious companies are following the rule, but a lot of smaller companies or somebody just born now, it's going to cheat a little bit. They might cheat. So we have to be careful. Okay, let's proceed. Point number six, what type of files are high res? Because this is important to understand what we're talking about. Obviously, WAV WAV files are uncompressed and those can be high res. Also, AIFF is uncompressed as well as, as you can imagine, DSF and DFF, which is the, the carrying the, fi the files for DSD, which is uncompressed music high quality, high resolution music. We also have, as you can imagine, FLAC and ALAC, the Apple uh, codec. And these are compressed, but they claim to be, and they are, lossless. Um, in fact, the streaming services heavily rely on these, especially FLAC. I mean, almost everything is FLAC, actually, high res streaming audio. So these are the main files. Let's proceed. I just wanted to add something that I forgot that the, the Japan Audio Society also started to add a lot of information on what is high resolution wireless audio. There's a lot of new of news on this. I mean, it's, it's very exciting because uh, until now that was really something neglected. Instead, we have these certified codecs that have, must be LDAC or LH. DC. And now finally, this type of audio has its own logo, as you can see. So wireless audio is high resolution. Wireless audio is a truth reality. Welcome, wireless. I would like to just spend a few words on the MQA anomaly. MQA is not a codec. MQA is not a type of file. MQA, as the acronym goes, is master quality authenticated. So that is something very important, which was, as we know, developed by Meridian, and then now it's expanding greatly. But that's mainly built upon FLAC files, which are compressed in a specific, special way, that which way they, they called origami. Now, I claim different things in different videos. Okay, I want to make a clear statement. MQA is lossy, until the end of its last origami unfolding. When it's fully unfold, it is lossless, full high resolution. Plus, I think something positive, although unfortunately it's a proprietary, proprietary uh, format, proprietary authentication, which you have to pay in order to use, is that it is something certified. It is an authentication, which I think it's something positive. In fact, Tidal does not need to have a certification for its files because Tidal uses its masters. Masters, the, the, the special high quality masters, are nothing but MQA files. And unfortunately, if you don't have an MQA decoder, we'll go more in depth into this, you're not absolutely listening to what is inside buried in, the, in that origami. So the Tidal masters, I mean, be careful. You, if you do not have proper gear, you're not hearing the full potential of it. Okay, so uh, MQA, although a lot of people are against it, hate it, uh, 
I like for example all the the lineup of cord do not like it they don't want to implement it I understand but but it is a form of authentication and I like that we need that okay point number eight okay the final question is it really better obviously I don't want to give a final answer to this I just want to uh, put my two cents on this say what I think obviously I think that high resolution audio is fantastic but obviously it isn't always fantastic and it, it isn't automatically fantastic it isn't automatically a good thing like automatically it an mp3 is worse than a cd you never know i mean maybe something properly done is better in a lossless for a, in, a, in a lossy format so what i'm trying to say is that high resolution albums a version high resolution version of a specific album isn't automatically better than for example a cd or for example uh i would as i was saying an mp3 possibly with a high bit rate or uh, a lot of people are, do not like vinyl in this sense they prefer high res that doesn't matter i mean uh, uh, even a, a crappy vinyl could be much much better than a high resolution version of an album also because all all of these are being remastered now in order to, if we're talking about old recordings where we have to get the tape and make a transfer these are being remastered and in this moment as we all know we have this loudness war where a lot of stuff is compressed is uh, limited on the top uh, we're losing dynamics there are lots of passages we're working in a fully digital domain a lot of conversions etc etc so a lot of uh, data a lot of information may not always may be lost along the way hence a normal simple first second cd edition might be much better than a high resolution version issued released today that's it that's what i think guys now you tell me what you think in your comments i know a lot of people are going to hate me for this uh this topic it's very complicated i'm sure i left a lot of information out but you can absolutely fill in okay guys thank you again and especially today i want to say remember music is born analog well guys if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.